All right, let's keep going. Let's go. So um, the next uh, component that we were going to talk about uh, really quickly is, so I got my niche down pack, right? I've signed that they've signed the contract and signed the deal. I've gone through that process. Now I'm on, I'm on a actual coaching call. This is my clients. There's four components to a coaching call, greeting and opening, finding out about the week before and the goals and working through obstacles of the previous week and then an action plan. Now, um, for the most part, when you hop on a coaching call with somebody, you already know by this time what they're coming to you for. Now, whether I don't know what method you're going to use for your coaching, what does that look like, whether it's smart goals, whether it's spin, whatever you're going to use, uh, by now your customers have, your clients have filled out paperwork, they filled out questionnaires, they've done all of that, and you're actually on the actual call with them. And when you're on the call with them, there's certain language and a certain order that you want to have. Now, I will tell you this, even on the coaching call, you still dictate how that call goes. You don't be all out here willy-nilly and letting them tell you how the call goes. Well, my mom was here last week and oh, I had to do this and then hickory dickory dog, the mouse went up the clock, all of that kind of stuff. No, that's not what you're doing, right? You're not doing that. You have to make sure that you're controlling the narrative on those actual calls. And when they venture out, then you got to bring them back in. How many of you have ever been to therapy? And this is nothing against therapy. I have a great therapist since my daddy died and I wish I would have known her sooner. How many of you have been to therapy? Put a one in the chat box. And Stella, you can tell me how many ones we got, please. Or do we have any ones? Yes, ma'am, lots of them. Okay, so this is my question for you. When you're in with your therapist and you're talking, does she, does she not or he not say, Okay, well, um, would you like, to, is that what you want to cover today? They don't let you be all over the place. They reel you back in. And then about halfway through, they look at that little clockety clock, right? They looking at the little clockety clockety clock. And then guess what they get ready to tell you? Okay, well, we have 15 minutes left. They look at, we have 15 minutes left. Which part of this would you like to discuss? They keep you on task. They keep you on task. So by the time your client gets to you, you're going to need to know what their needs are. So they should, they should be able to tell you that before the first session. You're going to have to pre prepare for the first session. And then as you have that particular first session, you're gonna, that's where you're going to create, create the game plan that they need. They all have individual plans. And when you do this plan, you're planning this out with your actual client. So by the time you're ready for the um, uh, to, to dive deep and leave, leave that particular call, you already know what the main goal is. When you're on that first session with them, you, you're creating their plan. What are we going to do for the next eight weeks? This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to work on. This is what we're going to try to solve. Do not try to be Robin Hood. Do not try to be all things to all men. What did they come to you for? And you've got to stick to the blueprint, stick to the script. And so you already have your agenda. Every good coach has an agenda. Every good coach or consultant has an agenda. What are you on the phone for? And can I tell y'all something? This is what's going to make or break your coaching career, your consulting career, whatever you're preaching, whatever you choose to use this information for. You don't want to just improvise. If you have a structure, you first you greet, you have a greeting, and then you do a, a summary of the issues, discussing how to move forward, defining action steps, and then a little cool down. If they know what you're doing, they know they're not just coming all willy nilly. As you're doing the opening, you, you're keeping it really, really short. Hey, you know, what's going on? Um, you've already built a rapport with them. And then in the last session, I'm looking at your SMART goals. In the last session, we talked about X, Y, Z, one, two, three. How is that project coming along? You're reviewing your pro the process already. At that point, you're asking questions. Okay, were there any challenges? Um, um, and, and, and a lot of people come up with excuses. Oh, no, we have. Uh, this is a blueprint that we mapped out and we only have so uh, many sessions. You've got to do the work. A lot of you are gonna be dealing with people who just wanna be held accountable. Even in that, whether you use your SMART goals, whatever you use, you've got to make sure that you're keeping track and keeping copious notes. Everybody have their individualized action plan and you're following the blueprint that you set with them. So they came to you with a problem that you can solve and you help them solve that particular problem. 
okay? And so you get to dictate how the, the actual uh, session goes. Once they get into a rhythm with you, they'll know you don't play. They'll know you're not there to make friends. They'll know you're there to say, hey, this is what we're working on. This is what we agreed upon. How can I help you move to that next space? What does that look like? What does that look like? And so those are some of the things that you're going to encounter when you're on the actual coaching. You want to know what is going to work for your client. What is working? Is the system working? Is the way we're doing things, is it working? And all this, all this stuff about systems and how to set it up and what does that look like from, front, from, from start to finish, all of that is it, all of that has to be in place. When somebody comes and they sign on with you, what happens next? What's the next step and the next step and the next step and the next step and the next step, okay? So when you're on the call, you dictate it. When you're on the coaching call, and not from a dictatorship, but you control the narrative. You stay on target because there's nothing like somebody saying she didn't help me. That's why you got to keep copious notes. That's why you got to write things down. That's why you, you don't just communicate through text all the time. You send an email stream. Really, you need a whole system in place that they can have access to. Trello is a good one. There's several good ones, and that's a whole nother conversation. Okay? But when you are on that call, your job is to make sure that you're going through the proper channels to um, uh, stick to the script of the uh, goals that were set in the beginning. I don't care, if, and, and I do care if people die, but you still are going to be responsible for what you, at the end of those eight weeks or two sessions or whatever, they're still expecting you to give them the result that you promised them you were gonna give them. This is how this, code, remember you told them in the discovery call what you can help them do, right? So at this point, they're your actual client. And so they're expecting you to do, and, and no matter what circumstances, because they're paying you your, their money, they're expecting you to solve the problem or help them solve the problem that you promised them in Clubhouse and then on the discovery call and after they sign the contract that you're going to be able to solve. Listen, I'm Dr. Tavis Taylor, and I hope that that has helped some of you along the way about the coaching call. I'll take a few questions before we have to get out of here. Stella, are there any questions? 